It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Paul Lowry, the CEO and co-founder of The Dental Menu. From 2008 to 2017, Paul helped dental offices generate thousands of new patients. After analyzing the data from those new patients, he found that people without dental insurance were more difficult to attract and retain. Many of the offices he worked with had membership plans, but they failed to provide an adequate solution. In 2017, he co-founded The Dental Menu. Dental Menu is a complete platform that allows dental providers to offer subscription plans directly to their patients. Dentists can easily create a menu of services for their patients, empowering them to select and build a plan that suits their needs and budget. Their platform creates a simple path to more patients spending more money in the practice. It allows dental practices to finally have a solid alternative to dental insurance. So Paul earned his bachelor's degree in advertising and marketing from Brigham Young University and a master's degree in business administration from Utah State. When he isn't immersed in work, he enjoys teaching, spending time with his wife and six children, dirt biking, fishing, and being outdoors. My God, that sounds like how I grew up in Kansas. Uh, I'll never forget it in Phoenix when I had four boys and police were always coming back to me because my boys were riding a go-kart or a mini bike down the street. And I'm like, and that's the, and there's something wrong with that. And, uh, I mean, I used to tell them all the time, uh, well, yeah, anyway, it, it was just tough, but it's a lot more fun to grow up in rural America than it is big city Phoenix where you're not even allowed to ride a go-kart down the street. Um, my gosh, um, you know, I wanted to get you on the show. I called you, you didn't call me because, when I talk to my dental insurance CEOs, yeah. they're telling me that 40 million Americans have lost their jobs and 30 million of those had insurance. Yeah. And all the data shows, I mean, we all know if you want more of something, subsidize it uh, through the employer or the government. And if you want less of something, tax it, regulate it, make it more expensive. And if there's 30 million Americans that lost their dental benefits, um, this pandemic isn't going to end soon. I mean, even if they, even if the virus disappeared today, you, you lost 40 million jobs, 30 million have dental insurance. And I mean, did you see that study on Yelp review where um, Yelp has um, released a big study saying, um, seeing what percentage of their businesses that used to get reviews are now closed for business and not coming back and empty and all that kind of stuff. What does that say? Where, where is your mind at um, for the fall? I, I see you post on Dental Town about, you know, a lot of people are worried about October, but where do you see October, November, December going right now? And right now it's uh, the first day of fall uh, for 90% of um, um, dentists who live in the Northern Hemisphere. And for the 10% of the humans in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the first day of spring. But what, is this, what, what does this tell you? What, what do you think in the fall is going to be like? Yeah, well, obviously dentists are really worried about October. And it's funny because a lot of them are sticking their heads in the sand and okay, we're going to take time off. And it's, well, what are you going to do six months <laughs> after October? It's just going to keep coming back. Um, and we're seeing, just like you said, the easiest people to convert onto your membership plan are going to be those that are used to having dental benefits. They, they feel, we've done research with people that have lost their benefits. They feel naked, like, oh, I can't access dental care because they've had benefits for so long. They don't realize you, you don't need insurance. It's not like going to a hospital and you have to be part of this network in order to access care. Um, so we're finding great success with even marketing, you know, you get into the dentrix, you look at the database and we're marketing a patient's mark that they have insurance, but we're getting them to join the membership plan because exactly what you're saying, they really don't have insurance anymore. And so there's a lot of patients that, that you're at risk of losing if you don't reach out to them because you don't know. They usually don't call their, their dentist and say, hey, I lost my job. I don't have benefits. They usually just kind of don't call and don't come back in. So the reactivation, the new patient marketing, those types of things are obviously really important if you want to recover from COVID. And men are not as honest as women about money issues. I mean, uh, men, men, it's a, it's a, it's a diss on their, their self when they, they're not a provider, when they don't have dental insurance. I mean, it's a, it's a big strike against your ego. It seems like women or have always been more easy to say, oh, I'm having financial trouble. I got laid off. My husband, got the, the women are just, uh, they wear their heart on the sleeves and they'll just tell you, but the men, when it comes to, they can't afford it, don't have money. They, they just quit talking and go away. Don't they? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's always, 
but trying to get those patients in during the October, November, December, you know, and that's my background is a lot of marketing and, and really what we are finding. It's no, it's no secret that the uninsured patients are harder to attract and retain, but we took, we, we looked at 250,000 patients over these different offices. And it was interesting, Howard, because we took and looked at the first visit date. So we kind of categorized them into birth dates, if you will, into a practice over all of these years. And across all these practices, patients that didn't have dental insurance, only 8% of them had been into a dental office within the last two years. So it's kind of mind boggling. So think about it, we get 100 new patients, we, we look at those five years down the road, and there's only eight, eight out of those 100 that have been back to the office in the last two years. It's, it's crazy. So I had a lot of offices calling saying, hey, I want to get new patients. Preferably, I want to get patients without insurance. And it was always, well, well, why and what's your plan? And you know, a lot of them, like I say, have membership plans. But the membership plans that are out there uh, really aren't, aren't fitting for today's patients. And what I mean by that, and I'm sure you've seen membership patients aren't new. New membership programs aren't new. but most of the plans are something like an exam twice a year, cleanings twice a year, some sort of annual x-rays, 15, 20% off of treatment, it's $300 a year, and boom, we have a membership plan. Um, and you know those are okay, but when you're really looking at trying to impact your practice large scale and be able to, to influence people to come into your office, those typically don't have the desired outcome that that really doctors are looking for. It's just this little sideshow that they have. Hey, I know I should have a membership plan, so I have one. You know, what does it include? I don't know. <laughs> Half the staff doesn't even know what it is that they have one. So it isn't making the impact that it's designed to, to have. I, I, I want to, um, <clears throat> somebody posts on downtown, October and November hygiene schedules. Are anybody else's November, uh, October and November hygiene schedules a graveyard? What are your strategies for these two months? And you said, um, we are finding success reactivating patients without insurance using membership plans and reactivating patients with insurance with an incentive to schedule in October to use their benefits. Here's a process we have been doing for some offices. You can do this yourself or find a marketing company to help you. Uh, Pull up a list of uninsured patients that haven't been into your office for a year or more. Send out an email, text, and direct mail piece. This can be spaced out or close together. We are finding success sending an email and a text the same day the text message reference, the uh, email. About a l- week later, we send an email piece. Uh, the email, text, and mail piece all have to link to a landing page. Okay, now my 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 uh, a quarter of my listeners they're still in dental kindergarten school, so you're you're cruising over their head, and a lot of them are just out of school. Um, will you answer this um, now to them in uh, a language they can understand? They don't know what a landing page is and all that stuff. Sure. Sure. So really what you're doing is any of your marketing, your email, your text, your social, you know, these different, these different communication mediums you're pushing out to your, your patients. And a lot of the, a lot of the products out there that the offices buy, they think, well, I need this program to send emails, or I, you know, I need to send text messages, or I, I know I need to be on social, these different things. They know they should do something, but what you've got to think about is what are you asking that patient to do? If a, if I'm simply saying, hey, Howard, you need to come in and, and take care of your teeth, like most people don't want to go to the dentist. <laughs> it's not really high on their priority. So what you've got to do is motivate them and you need your messaging to be able to send them somewhere. Um, if you think of, of any kind of, of marketing, like a magnet, you're trying to get them to go and learn more so that they want to take action. What dentists do really well at is they do well at restorative treatment because the biggest motivator is pain. So if somebody is in a lot of pain, they're going to jump on Google. They're going to search root canal. They don't care what it costs. They're calling. They're coming in. But when you're trying to get a lot of patients, let's say, to fill a hygiene schedule in October, November, they aren't in pain. and So they don't want to come in and spend money necessarily. We're all kind of we like our time. We're kind of lazy. And so... Filling hygiene is a little different than restorative. Restorative is easy because you just have to find those patients that are in pain. They're going to come in. And so when you're doing this marketing, a landing page is simply a a simple web page, kind of a one-page thing where patients, you can have a very concise message. Hey, here's what we want you to do. 
hit this this website address and then that's going to tell them exactly what to do where you capture that information and you're kind of leading them on a sales a sales process so to speak now um you you said the landing page includes a short video that discusses the value of preventative care and hygiene um i i remember the internet started i mean jeff bezos and by the way i'll i confess i'm an idiot i mean um i had my uh, mba in uh, i think 89 or, or whatever but i mean Amazon went public in 94, and I was just like, what? And I kept looking at the value. I stared at it 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, before I said, okay, I understand, and I, I started Dental Town. But I, I stared at that thing for five minutes. But he specifically said, um, you know, it looks like we sell books, but the internet is so slow and the pipes are so small that we can only send a text message. As it gets bigger, we'll add images and then when it gets bigger, we can add video. Um, do you think right now with all the video and YouTube and all that stuff that um, your website's got to have video as opposed to a text and a, a picture of a dentist that looks like his mug shot at 2 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. That's what they're going to watch. So, again, if you send out some emails with a video or you send out emails with that, they're going to watch the videos. And so the, the challenge with those, obviously, is they're, they're harder to develop. That's one of the things we can can help offices with. But sure, absolutely, they're going to watch more video. Same thing on the social, just, just having some posts with some, some sort of video component is going to help. And what you're trying to do is educate. You know, if you can get a patient in front of a doctor or a hygienist and they have time to actually educate them, typically then they're going to respond. And so how do you do that outside your office? How do you get some of that attention to get them to be educated that they should come in for a hygiene visit. What's the value of the hygiene? Now, as you know, Howard, we have thousands of new patient phone calls. So new patient calls, the first thing they usually ask is, do you accept my dental insurance? And if the answer is yes, we do, then that front desk gal sounds like she works for the insurance company. It, it's almost comical of, you work for the insurance company, here's what you get, here's what you don't get. <laughs> And if, if they don't have dental insurance, the first thing they ask is, how much does it cost? And so the problem is, is I, I heard one the other day, patient calls in, how much does it cost for an exam cleaning and x-ray? Do you have insurance? No. Well, we have a new patient special, it's $99. She says, okay, thanks. She hangs up. 30 seconds later, the same patient calls back, new, this prospective new patient calls back and says, well, hey, how much is it for my exam cleaning and x-rays after the new patient special? Like, this is the kind of patient you want, right? I'm looking to be here long term. And, and he fumbles and bumbles. And, well, it depends on if you want x-rays. And, well, do you want if it's an FMX or if it's a bite wings? Like, it's just down this spiral of, uh, and then finally he quotes her, I think, 279. And she says, thank you and hangs up. And it's just crazy that they don't have a good solution to be able to, to solve that problem. And so they're, they're blasting out. If you think of new patient generation, the offers you see are exam cleaning and x-rays for 99, 79, 29. You know, they get to where they, well, I don't know what to do. This guy's doing 39 for an exam cleaning and x-rays. I guess I'm going to do 29. Or they'll give away free exam and x-rays, or it's bleaching for life, or it's a crown special for 799, or 10% off treatment. All of these offers that they give are catered to, to patients that don't have insurance, but they're not setting them up to be long-term patients. They're setting them up to be a deal for one time and come in. And then from there on, what do we do with them? How do we convert them to long-term patients? And dentists say, well, I hate marketing because it doesn't work because I, I did this special and all they came in and they got that special, they left. It's like, yeah, because your product and your membership Plan sucks. Like, what else to tell you? Well, was it, was it, wasn't, I mean, wasn't Groupon a race to the bottom? I mean, yes. you know, you had your favorite Mexican restaurant, and then you get this coupon. I got two tacos and beans and rice for a dollar. Then the next week, the next day, I'll give it to you for 50 cents. Then a month later, I'll pay you a dollar to eat it in my, <laughs> I mean, anybody can sell something for a loss. I mean, you don't have to be a genius to buy something for a dollar and sell it for 50 cents. Yeah. The genius buys it for 50 cents and sells it for a dollar. In fact, if you ask any millionaire, how did you become a millionaire? They say, well, I bought a million of these for a dollar <laughs> and I sold them all for $2 and I'm a millionaire. And Groupon to me is just like, 
that that was that was the dumbest idea known to man because you're attracting a race to the bottom. And in fact, are they still a thing? Are they successful anymore? Or did or did everyone finally figure it out? I don't know. I mean, I think they are in in areas where you have you know excess capacity for a concert or something. Maybe it works, but for dental, yeah. It can, hey, hey, again, if you're going to get a patient in the door and then you actually have a plan to sell them, maybe it's worth getting them in at a loss. You know, people do that all the time. The problem is, is the doctors, they're getting people in at, at very low margins and or a loss, but then they have no way to convert those to long-term patients. I mean, a, a patient's going to spend six or 700 bucks a year in your office. You can afford to spend two or 300 bucks to get them in. The problem is, is when you're getting them in for two or $300 and you have nothing to sell them afterwards, then that's where it's stupid. But, but it, if you're doing some sort of an offer or a deal to get patients in, and you're able to convert those to long-term paying patients that increase your practice value and increase treatment that month or that year, then it's worth doing. But that's what that's where we feel like, and that's why we started Dental Menu, is we feel like there was a missing connection there to actually having a, a product that was going to move the dial a way that, that dentists could market a little bit differently. Huh. So um, explain, and I'm, so so... Anybody driving to work or uh, um, on the treadmill for an hour saying, okay, um, explain this to me like I'm five because, um, you know, where where would you begin on a membership plan? So I, I want you to start with, um, um, I mean, you're the dental menu, dental menu, uh, the best dental membership plan ever, especially for hygienists uh, in front office and patients, it says. And by the way, I don't do commercials. Did uh did I pay you or did you pay me to come on the show? No. Nope. Um, my gosh. Um. So the bottom line is, uh, explain this to me like I'm five, and uh, and where where would I begin? So I, I mean, I really like to take a look at at because doctors, maybe five year olds don't, but but dentists understand insurance, and so if you look at what insurance provides, insurance does provide some value. The first thing they do, there's really four key things that an insurance company provides to you or to, to somebody that accepts insurance being a provider, a practice. So the first thing they're going to do is they're going to organize a wide range of dental services and they're going to make a product. So if you go look up uh, dental insurance, they've productized that. They tell you that, hey, you get four bite wings, you get one exam, you get a panel every three years, whatever it is. They put this wide range of, of services and they put it into a product that a consumer can actually purchase. And then they market and sell that product. So Delta Dental's out there selling their product to businesses and to individuals. So they're marketing and selling that insurance product. And then they handle all of the billing between them and the patients, whether it's an employer or patients directly. They're they're handling that financial relationship with collecting those premiums. And then they're tracking the benefit eligibility and, the, and who's doing those, the payments for those services. So they're providing those four services for an office. Now, they charge 40 cents on the dollar, essentially. 40 cents goes to the insurance company off of that. But those are the services they're providing. And when you look at a membership plan or a product, then you have to look at, okay, is my membership plan, is it, is it accomplishing those same things that insurance is accomplishing? Am I organizing a, my services, my wide range of all my, my menu services, let's say, am I putting those into an easy menu for patients to consume? If you showed up at the drive through at the restaurant, Howard, and there was all of these weird turns and all of these weird codes, and you didn't even know what the heck to order, it's like a foreign language, you don't know what to get, so you're just you're just hoping that whoever is across is telling you what to buy. It's confusing as all get out, and then and then you've got to figure out well how do I market and sell my membership plan? Do I have a plan to actually market? Will my staff sell it and support it? Are they gonna are they gonna kick against it? Is it marketable for consumers? I hear I hear a lot of doctors say, well, I don't ever want to do that. I would never I would never do that. But then we talk to patients. I don't really care, doctor. You're saying that you, you need more revenue and you need more patients. If you have a poor product, it's any business. Take a step out of dentistry. If you have a crappy product, <laughs> then you better sell on price, right? <laughs> sell at the very bottom. And then 
The, the billing side is what most of the competitors in my space do well, is they help dentists set up this reoccurring monthly billing. And I'm sure you've seen it all over dental town. Why would you pay a third party to help you do monthly reoccurring payments? And frankly, you don't need a third party to do that. I can, I can recommend some merchant service providers where you can go set up subscription that'll bill people monthly or annual or whatever you want. That's not hard. But the, the challenge is, is how do you track the benefit eligibility and then those services and the payments? How do you get those into your practice management software and get all those to sync up? So that's, that's definitely more complex than what a five-year-old <laughs> version would be. But we just see that the, the products, the membership products compared to an insurance product are crappy. <laughs> you know, it's like, we got to create a better product for you to sell your patients so you win, <laughs> so you sell. I should start saying a fifth year dental student. That's a dental student who didn't get out on time. <laughs> yeah. Just a year late. Uh, <laughs> that's the one you want to drink with. Um, so what were the four things again? Um, the dental insurance has four things. It organizes dental services into a sellable product. Mm-hmm. It markets and sells the plan. Yep. Insurance ver- verification. Well, then it bills, bills the are... customer, so it handles all the billing. You okay, know, t- t- tell me the four it. again, the four again real quick. Yeah, so it organizes the, you know, if you look at dental services are confusing, and the insurance company makes them confusing, but that's another discussion. But they they organize those into something that I can say, hey, for 50 bucks a month, I can buy this product, and this is what I get. Okay, and so somebody, that's the, that's the, a sellable product. Now I have a product to sell, right? And if I'm an insurance guy, I got to figure out a way that I can sell my product. So I'm going to package it and then I'm going to market and sell it. So that's the second one. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, as an insurance, if I'm an insurance company, which I'm not, I'm just saying <laughs> insurance companies bill for the premium to the customer or the employer. So they're collecting the money they're dealing with failed payments, they're chasing payments, they're figuring all that out, they're collecting the money, and then they're tracking benefit eligibility for those patients and saying, hey, you know what, Paul, it's been over six months, you're eligible for a cleaning, we'll pay for a cleaning, or we'll pay 50% of a crown, or whatever that is, they're handling all of those benefit eligibilities, and then when an office files a claim, then they're submitting payment for that claim and saying, here's a payment for Paul Lowry, This should go on his patient ledger to pay $500 towards his crown. So they handle kind of that whole. Okay. And you say they, they, their gross profit for that, or they take 40 cents on the dollar to do those four functions that doesn't have anything to do with paying claims. No, no. I mean, that that has to do with paying claims as well. They take 40% essentially of, of, you know, if a, if an employer is paying a thousand dollars a month to an insurance company, $400 $400 is going to the insurance company. $600 will eventually trickle down to the providers is basically what the kind of happens. Yeah. Huh. And, um, and what I don't understand about, um, the, um, the insurance companies, I mean, just crazy. Um, why don't they have an app? I mean, why, why, I mean, and that, that's why, that's why, um, people were so upset with, uh, dentists were so upset with Obamacare. It's like, um, not to get political, but, they they didn't address the thirty percent of the overhead that was just pushing paper. It yeah. could all be digital. Well, I mean, if America's good at anything, it's Silicon Valley fintech. Why do I have to hire a human being yeah. to call the company because their website sucks and be on? I mean, we we have to have a human call everyone, or we basically don't know what they're doing. And I I've always asked them. Why don't you just make an app? I mean, you could just come in. You could have your Delta Dental app, and I scan it, and I know you're Paul Lowry, and and we're all done and ready to go. You, um, want, you, you, you know, they want to make it easy to file claims and get pay that money out. So you so you think it's it's obviously intentional that they 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 would automate collecting uh, selling the premium and collecting that money, but not paying the claims. Uh, uh, do you, so do you think in game theory in game theory that's just intentional right out of the gate? Yeah, why wouldn't it be? If you've got to sit on the phone for twenty minutes. Well, well the other the other the other side of that is incompetent and they seem to be extremely incompetent. Yeah. I mean I mean they, they do. I mean they just they, they just I mean they, they can't impress me. I mean they've had a product for thirty two years that just continually falls behind uh, the scope. I, I found they're, an they're interesting not, thing last in, night. They're not incompetent of of uh, getting people to not use their benefits. Again, going back to these phone calls from insurance 
new patients, they have insurance. They, they spend 30 minutes on the dang phone trying to figure out if they're going to be eligible and what we'll call the eligibility. We'll find this out. It's such a game because they don't want to make it easy. They don't print your, your number on the back of the insurance card so that it's easy to verify benefits. And then when, when an insurance company doesn't pay, who's the bad guy? The doctor, the stupid yeah. provider, right? Because they, they should have known. And now I own, they're telling me I owe $2,000. And like, what? The, you know, an insurance company gets scot free of, of all of that. Now, now one then, of the thing, one of the biggest missed opportunities of, um, of what you're doing, uh, in, in my opinion, is that the reason Netflix and Spotify, the valuations were so high. I mean, remember when Netflix was worth more than Disney? Yeah. And I'm just like, really? Do I have to explain to you what Disneyland is? Disney World? I mean, Disney, they own ESPN. I mean, you know, because I've lived through this bubble with the internet stocks. From yeah. 94 to 2000, I mean, companies who had never made a dime were worth billions of dollars. And, of course, it all came down and crashed. But, uh, but a lot of these membership plans, the, the, the dental office will go through the whole sales thing. Yeah. And, but they'll just sell it for the year. And then at the year... They got to start the whole sales thing again. And it's like, gosh, um, I mean, when you look at gym memberships, the whole gym membership, the whole reason it makes money is because you sign up on the on the on Ju- July or uh, January 1st, it's your New Year's resolution. The average person, you know, they have great goals and great um, plans. But after eight months, you know, they're back to eating cheeseburgers and French fries. Yeah. But it takes them about 36 months to cancel their membership. Yeah. So month nine through 36, there's no one in the gym so they can oversell capacity. But yeah. the dentist, everyone I know that did this plan, you know, it's good for one calendar year and then we start right. over again. Um, so they, you need to ding them in, in to perpetuity until right. they, they cancel. Yeah, and we're finding that, so first- Is that now, what you're doing? Yeah, and we, we feel like dentistry really is the is the first reoccurring revenue model, subscription revenue. Think of think right now, Howard, if I could come to you with my product and say, hey, Howard, if you don't buy my product and you don't use it, you're going to be in dentures. <laughs> it's like, I want that kind of product. You will lose your teeth if you don't buy this product. That's an awesome product. I wish I could sell that, which is kind of what we're selling. But the thing that's crazy is the practice valuation goes up. These, these companies where I am in Silicon Valley, they're all software companies. They're getting 10x annual revenues. So think about that. You do a million dollars in revenue because they're a subscription base. They're selling for 10 times that amount, $10 million. When you sell a practice that has insurance patients, you're getting, you know, one X kind of a thing because they're not as valuable. But if you can get the subscription going now, what we've done with our product is taking this quite a bit further. So again, we love the monthly payments and a lot of offices say, well, Hey, I don't want to do monthly payments because I'm, I'm so worried about, getting paid or these types of things. And it's crazy because, again, go back to insurance companies. They're very successful. They charge monthly all the time. But what do they do with the 5 or 10% of patients that they know they won't make money? They increase their premium for the other 90% to cover those few. We're seeing right now default rates between 3 and 5% of people that will default before their contract is up, so to speak. So just add another dollar to the rest of the people because you're 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 taking your 300 patients and you're deeming 280 of them. You're not trusting them because you got 20 boneheads, which you shouldn't want as patients anyways. Let them go out the door. Take care of your good patients. So what we do is with our product, you can actually offer a different frequency of how often they can come in for their preventative services. So. This every six months, if you go talk to hygienists and you say, does every patient that come in have, need to come and see you every six months? That is something that the insurance company has set. If you talk to patients that don't have insurance, we've done a lot of exit interviews and we've said, why didn't you buy that plan? And they've told us, I don't want to come in every six months. I know I won't use the gym membership, so I'm not going to buy it. So we've actually had some success with, with offices offering uh, a cleaning every nine months or even every 12 months. And that's what they're using the market with because it gets the price point down. Stop doing a $29 exam clean and x-ray special. So a membership plan for 15 bucks a month where they get a profi once a year, but they're at least connected to your office. Now, what we do is we take that a step further. So you buy the core benefits and I should be clear, 
we do a, an intake process, but this is up to the doctor what he wants to include and whether he wants to offer other frequencies or not. Once they've chosen that, we help the doctor have some additional upsells that, that consumers can customize their plans. So take fluoride, for example. Every time I go to the dentist, I don't have insurance. They ask me, and I go to a lot of dentists because that's what I do for, for work, right? I try different ones out. So they will ask me, hey, Paul, do you want fluoride? The next question is, how much does it cost? Like, okay, well, it's $30. Well, what are the benefits of it? We have this sales conversation every time I'm in there. And well, your kid's here, does he want fluoride? And your wife's here, does she want fluoride? Instead, what we're doing with these membership plans is you buy the base benefits, you want fluoride, it's three bucks a month, let's add it to your subscription, and then you're done, you never sell it again. You could sell bleaching, you could sell Botox, you could sell premium imaging. I talked to an office the other day where they said, well, we always have this issue, doctors in the back, he tells back office like, hey, I need to get a Pano and a full FMX, I gotta figure out this treatment, right? Patient doesn't have insurance. The back office is like, well, I'm going to take all these pictures. I don't want to have the awkward conversation of price. I, I don't sell. I just work in the back office. I just want to take pictures. I don't, I don't want to sell. That's the treatment coordinator's job, right? So they take a bunch, of, a bunch of x-rays. Patient finishes. They go to check out in the front desk or treatment coordinator. Oh, hey, you owe $680 for, for x-rays. And the patient's, what the <laughs> I owe how much? I didn't consent to do that. And so the front desk is like, well, we usually write those x-rays off because I don't want to lose the patient. But then the doctors PO'd at me because I, I wrote off these x-rays. So there's this problem. So what we found is, look, you could have an upgraded imaging package for seven, eight bucks a month. It includes any and all x-rays, whether they get them or not. You could, I, I've got offices upselling nitrous for two bucks a month. Everyone wants to buy nitrous, but now you're getting... $24 a year, whether they use the nitrous or not. Emergency exams, emergency x-rays, patients will pay two or three bucks a month for that. And let me ask you this, if a patient breaks his tooth, do you want him going to Google or responding to a mailer? Or do you want him saying, hey, I spent an extra two bucks a month with my dentist and I know it's not going to cost me anything for me to have him go look at my cracked tooth. You're going to get the treatment out of it. So we've got offices that will do an offer for 15, 18 bucks a month for their base level plan. But by the time they get them in and they're working with them, they're able to show them value of other services. They're getting up to 30, 40, 50 bucks a month for their membership plan because patients are buying, you know, eight bucks a month. I'm buying bleaching because I want bleaching, but not all patients want that. If I take a hundred patients in an office, you've got patients that want to spend as little as possible, but you have, you do have patients that will spend more money. And so when you have a one-size-fits-all membership plan, you're leaving money on the table over here, and you're also not selling some other people over here because it's just, this is what it is. Hope it fits you. And if it doesn't, sorry, this is all I want to offer. <laughs> this is all my plan does. And I just want to explain to the kids real clear. I mean, obviously, um, we call it temporal mandibular disorder, but the patient calls it TMJ, um, the endodontist. Uh, they don't like the word root canal. They want to call it endodontic therapy, but the patients all call it a root canal. And now um, periodontists are all saying they don't like deep cleanings. They want it to be periodontal therapy. Well, I'm sorry, but um, there's a language in America, and they call this dental insurance, um, but there's no such thing as dental insurance. It's always a dental benefit. In fact, if you look at Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Aetna and, and all the insurances, they're only an, um, it's the only good benefit if your employer or the government pays for it. But you wouldn't you wouldn't buy those premiums and those risks uh, for yourself, and they they couldn't tell. So really, insurance is an actuarial risk analysis versus moral hazard. So you go out into uh, city year and lay you. Uh, um, Lehigh, Utah, is that how you pronounce it, Lehigh? Lehigh, yeah. Le Lehigh. So you go into Lehigh and you say, okay, for every 100 drivers, one guy is going to crash his car. So you charge everybody a little bit for auto insurance because one guy is going to um, crash his car. Same thing with house and fire insurance. Um, you know, you insure 100 houses, one burns down. But with medical and dental you employ 100 people with medical insurance, dental benefits. How many of them need a cleaning exam and x-ray? How many of them eat butter and bacon and cheese? I mean, you know, there, there's there's no way to spread the risk around. You can think you can spread it to your employer, 
and um, and they do that, uh, but that makes their prices higher, so that hurts on um, exports. And then you think um, you're going to have the government pay for it, but what you don't realize is that you pay for the government. So we're talking about dental benefits. Yeah. Uh, there's really no such thing as dental insurance. And by the way, health insurance would be completely affordable if they would treat it as insurance. And the reason socialized countries love health insurance, uh, love socialized medicine, is because look at Canada. I mean, Canada is a classic example. Canada, like America, 99% of Americans did not go to the hospital last year. So if it's free and you didn't use it, by God, it's great. And uh, But the people that use it, then you have to go look at what, how many of them um, have to wait half a year, how many people, um, how many tens of thousands per month will travel out of Canada to go get a surgery that they want now. So you really got to look at the people who are using it, not the 99% that never went to the hospital. I mean, that, that's just a crazy way to uh, judge something. Uh, yeah. But it, it's a benefit. And yeah. with all things, if the government subsidizes it, or gives you a tax credit, so somehow makes it cheaper because price is everything. In fact, that's a weird thing that Dennis said to me. I'll say, well, what is your favorite procedure? And you go, oh, my God, I just love a crown. I just like to do a crown. And I'm like, okay, well, how much you charge your crown? A thousand? And then, and then the earth goes around the sun. So what are you going to do with your crown fee? Well, I love it so much, I'm going to raise it. Okay, well, that's an economic barrier to entry, so that means you're going to raise the price so you can do less, but I thought you said you loved it. See, if you really loved a crown every time the earth went around the sun in those 365 days you'd have one eye on the patient one eye on costs and you'd use your god-given brain talent to drive down the cost so more people could afford the freedom to get a crown in fact you really know when someone loves implants um you know if you're not doing one one of anything a week you're not making money on it but a lot of people spend a lot of money on implants they're only placing like one a month um but man when i find someone that's doing 40, 50 implants a month, they got their price all the way down to nine ninety five because they know implants aren't covered by insurance. Yeah. So when the periodontist says, well, you need six implants and they're 1500 a piece, they're going to get on the phone. Well, how much is an implant? Yeah. And then when you're in Boca Raton and you call my buddy, he says nine ninety five. they're like, holy boom. So yeah. they go to there. And of course, they're buying six. And it, it'll take him the same length of surgical time to play six as it would one yeah. and you know so if you love something and you want to do more of it remember the most protective moat around your business is not um a copyright it's not some you know some intellectual property it's it's being the lowest cost provider that's how southwest um, airlines got Number one at twenty seven percent. That's why Walmart, Sam, uh, Price Club from Soul Price. What a genius cost cutter! In fact, I'm 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 still shocked that Warren Buffett didn't take that big old basket of cash he had and just buy Costco outright. I mean, it's just his his deal. But um, if you're not making it faster, easier, higher quality, lower cost, or smaller, um, you're you're not going to run away. So so I want to get right back to today. This is the first day of fall. And by the way, you're such a man. There's not one fall thing in your office. I mean, there's not a pumpkin. There's not a there's not a Halloween thing, a Thanksgiving. You must not have six grandkids. Uh, my my grandkids. My house looks like an an, uh, an orange, some type of LSD orange trip. It's just everywhere. There's just orange everywhere. But um, going into this fall, this is the first day of fall, October, November, December. What do you specifically think? should be their action plan um, as we go into, uh, you know, this pandemic started in March, April, May, June, July, August, September. So we're seven months into a pandemic. Um, everybody told us back in the spring that it would die down in the summer and it'd come back with a vengeance. But everything is, you know, all the information, everybody's seeing the same information and it seems to change. But it does look like Europe is having... Uh, up Greece, you know, it looks like it's happening in Europe and they're in the Northern Hemisphere along with 90% of all humans. What do you think they should, what should be their action plan right now? How could you help them survive the fall? Yeah. What so, would they do? So, I mean, they all need either new patients or they got to reactivate existing ones in hygiene. So my first question to them is outside of dental insurance, tell me about your hygiene products. Tell me how you productized your hygiene. How do consumers consume your hygiene products? 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and put dental menu as a hygiene product that's a lot better than any other product out there because consumers can, again, they can customize their subscription to your office, which means you're going to get higher adoption rates. And then you, they can buy additional services from your office, which is going to increase your margin and increase the amount of money they're spending. If you look at, if you look at McDonald's, how much money did they make from supersizing their meals? By one simple, hey, for another 79 cents, every customer that comes in and gets a bigger drink, the margin's you know, almost pure profit and so on. And so we're going to help you create or set up this product so that then when you market, whether you're doing reactivation, whether you're doing uh, emails or socials or whatever it is, now you have a better way to market because you can have different offers and different hooks to get people into your office. For example, I've got an office right now that their membership plan is a $25 enrollment fee and it's uh, $20 a month. So $45 the first month. So we're advertising on social media, come in and get an exam cleaning and x-rays for $45 when you sign up for the membership plan. So they're getting patients in, those patients are spending $45 getting those services that day, but they're also committing to a six month agreement to pay $45 a month and to keep paying that month after month. So there's, again, there's a longer term. So instead of just throwing out a, a one-time offer, we're, we're throwing out things, hey, sign up for our membership plan, in October, and we'll enter you into a drawing for a $200 Amazon gift card. Let's get them in in October. Let's let's figure out how, and that works, by the way, with insurance patients. Come in and use your benefits in October. We'll put you into a drawing for a $500 gift card because you've got to get them in in October so that six months later you don't have the same problem. You know, we got to flatten this out for them. So there's a lot of marketing things you can do, but again, if you take uninsured patients, I'm going to ask you. Tell me about your product or what you're selling to the uninsured patients. And if it's a lame duck membership plan that, that isn't really going to make any long-term difference or the majority of patients don't want to buy, you better fix that first because the marketing dollars, that's where it gets real expensive. You could dump twenty dollars or $30,000 into marketing. What's the plan? <laughs> what are you going to offer? How are you going to get them to be long-term loyal patients? How do you build this reoccurring revenue model? How do you get them to spend as much money as possible in your office. So we've got a self-assessment on our website that you don't have to put in any information. You can go look at it. it. Gives you a lot of ideas. I'm happy to review some ideas here that you can implement on your own. One, one thing we've had great success with is doing a rewards program within your membership plan. So when a patient, if you look at insurance, they have like a thousand or $1,500 towards treatment. That's what you get once a year. They all have a party at the end of the year because Hopefully people didn't use it, right? So when a patient comes in and they receive their cleaning, they actually get, you can decide what you want to do, but say $25 or $50 or $100 towards treatment that may be needed in the future. So imagine if these consumers, if these patients are paying you 20, 30, 50 bucks a month, but by using their benefits, they're building this reward up in the office. They don't ever go away and the treatment acceptance goes way up. If you have a crown and it's $9.95 or it's $11.95, but they have some rewards, stop discounting so much. Have them earn rewards to connect to your office rather than just price, discount, discount price. You got to get out of playing in that price game, both from a, a treatment standpoint, but marketing as well. What are you going to market? People would always call me, I'd call, I need new patients. Okay, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to market? What are we going to say? We're going to put a really nice picture of you and your family and say, we do quality dentistry. I do dentistry better than anybody else. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> no, we're not going to get people in. And the consumers are price conscious. They're they're looking on the internet. They've got all kinds of different things. It's different than 1980, where you just hang up a shingle. You got to be a little more sophisticated. So the first thing to do is create a product that patients are going to actually want to buy. And then there's different ways to market that product. And, and I just want to say that this model... Um, was um I just found out last night on Monday Night Football. I was all excited to watch Monday Night Football. And then I found out at the beginning of the show that they were celebrating their 50th anniversary of Monday Night Football. And I thought, damn, I'm eight years older than Monday Night Football. That's a great way to ruin the, ruin the game before it even starts. But this thing goes back to the 1700s. And what it came out is after the printing press is um, the way they 
figured out how to sell the most books wasn't trying to instead of selling trying to sell you a book with all the costs of trying to sell a book they would sell you into a book club yeah. and then you were paying money monthly and then they could just keep the flow of books coming faster easier costco um costco it's everybody would say everybody used to get mad i, I remember when price club and costco um when i first started going there anytime you went there somebody arguing like I'm I'm planning on buying several hundred dollars and you're saying I can't because I'm not and they're like no because Soul Price knew that the minute you were a member like American Express how do they how do they charge three percent fees when Chase charges one is because you're a member yeah. and I actually like the American Express membership card because if you um, you know traveling around lecturing I mean whenever I would you know when my world would fall apart the plane canceled there's no connecting flight. It's just crazy. You take out your gold American Express, you call that number, and they have every single travel thing known to man on one computer. In yep. fact, that, that call center is right here in Phoenix. There's like 6,000 employees. And she'd say, okay, here's your only three options on earth. You know, yep. you can rent a car and drive to this city and then catch this flight. But they just have it all. But once you're a member, psychology thinks, well, if I'm Paul's member... Uh, I'm a VIP. He's going to take care of me. I'll get the best deal. Yeah. I don't have to worry about checking around and calling, you know, and all this stuff like that. So when you're a social animal and you just, you care so much about what all the other animals think because, uh, you know, all the data on species is however the species goes, how you go. I mean, you can't have a species go to uh, extinct, but but Paul made it. You know, he's he's all fine. So you have these social glues holding you together, and membership is so intense that Costco, Sam's Club, Walmart, none of them are going to give it up. Uh, yeah. They try to do it on the airlines, all this stuff like that, but um, humans just want to be a member. They want to be a VIP. Uh, they want to think that... Um, they, they can stop the um, shopping around thing. I, I'm a member now. I'm a member of your office. I'm on the membership plan. And I would I would just really urge everyone to make it so once they sign up for the membership plan, it dings them on the first day of every month until they cancel, just like a gym membership. Um, because uh, humans, uh, their eyes are bigger than their stomach on Thanksgiving dinner and on, um, j j you know, on January 1st, they know they're going to start only eating kale and going to the gym before and after work. And all these are great ideas, and I hope they work. But uh, you'll go back from kale to potato chips uh, probably in about eight months. Um, so um, in these tough times, what do you think is a better return on investment? Trying to market to one of the 8 billion strangers that's never been in your office to try to get a new client, a new patient, or trying to market to the people that have already been in your office once before and try to reactivate. Yeah. What do you think is the higher return? Yeah, so marketing 101, right, is the best list is the list that nobody else has. <laughs> so the best list you can get is your patient list. Nobody else has that list. And so anytime you're doing marketing, there's really only two things you can control. One is the list, and the second one is the offer. And so what offer am I going to give these, these people that don't have insurance that have been in my office? And what you need to do is get them on your membership plan. And again, if your membership plan, if you want to do just a simple membership plan, it's 300 bucks a year, you don't need anybody. So don't pay anyone to do that. But I'm telling you, if you want to get a little more sophisticated and have a better product to offer your patients, it's going to be better for your patients and it's going to increase revenues for you. That's something that that is going to help your practice long term. Now, there's challenges with doing that. Just take simple the monthly payments. It's easy to charge a patient every month, but a lot of office managers especially hate it because they don't know what to do with that revenue. And so they'll push people towards the annual. We've seen it over and over and over. If you auto renew people on an annual, that's when you get the call and say, you just charged me 1200 bucks. Well, yeah, you, your wife, and your two kids, you all renewed the membership. I don't want to buy that right now. I'm going to wait till I come back in. If you do the monthlies, you can set it and forget it, and you're going to keep them on a lot longer. Now, the challenge is, is what do I do with that revenue that's coming in monthly? And that's one of the things that we've solved in our solution, Howard, is tracking those benefits and the payments and the eligibility. 
I sat down with doctors and we had our MVP that had associates being paid on collections. And I said, hey, owner doctor, how do you pay your associate doctor who's sitting right here? How do you pay him when he does nitrous or exams on your membership program? And they looked at each other and it was very awkward. <laughs> and it was like, hey, wait, I'm getting screwed here. I, I don't get anything because it's showing up as a zero on the ledger because you're just collecting that money. And so that's what we've really solved. If you've got hygienists and associates being paid on production, we're managing the benefit eligibility and we're tracking the revenue so that it actually gets attributed to the providers and the benefits and the patients. Because when you get a better product for patients, then you've got to have a way to really administer that. And what happens is the front desk says, I don't want to deal with anything that's, I don't even want to deal with something simple as monthly payments. So I'm going to tell the doctor that everyone chooses annual. In fact, I'll only sell annual and I'm just going to keep it super simple, not because it's best for the practice, not because it's best for the patients. It's best for her. She wants to go home at five o'clock and she doesn't make any more money than whether it works or not. And so we really help with a lot of those things so that we take that burden off the staff, the team members, so that they support it and they'll sell it. We actually need something you can do on your own, but we'll help you administer it as well as a team incentive program. Get your team behind it. Let them make some additional revenue. By, by, you know, I've got offices that when they hit 500 members, they are going to take, and I don't know if they are now, but because of COVID, but they were going to take their staff and a significant other on a cruise. If you have 500 members paying you 300 bucks a month, you're making $15,000 a month reoccurring revenue. Take your stinking staff on a cruise. You know, you just increased your practice value several hundred thousand dollars, you know. So make sure your staff gets behind it. And if they don't understand it or they don't want to administer it, or they don't have tools to market and sell it, then it's going to fall flat on its face. And those are some of the things that we can help with. So you said marketing 101 says the best list is the one no one else has. No one else has your patient list. So reactivating your patients that are no longer active is the best bet. And it's so much less, it's so much more cost effective. A new patient's going to cost you 150 to $300 to generate, depending on what method you use. Reactivation, I mean, your your reactivation cost, you should be down in, you know, 15 to $50 to get that new patient. It's significantly cheaper. And they already know, like, and trust you, at least to, to a point versus an unknown, you know, new patient. But again, you've got to look at if I've got patients without insurance, that maybe they're even tight on money. Why are they going to come in your office if something doesn't hurt? So and then you said, down. but you said the second best marketing bet is your offer well that's the other lever you have to pull so what what would you what 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 do you uh what's the best offer so some of the offers that we found that work is patients that have insurance if you give them some sort of an offer or a drawing for them to use their benefits in october so for instance hey you know we'll we'll give you uh, we'll put you in a drawing for 500 bucks if you actually schedule and complete a cleaning in the month of October, I already have benefits. I might as well come in then in October instead of waiting till November or December. If they don't have dental insurance, some of the offers we're finding that's working again is come in and get an exam, cleaning, and x-rays for $49 when you sign up for our plan or for $29. But instead of just giving them that service for really inexpensive, what you're doing is saying, well, yeah, you come in, you sign up today, you get all those services for today. So so sure, you're giving them a better deal today, but they're committing to your office long term. They're committing to be on your, your plan for six months or, or 12 months, depending on what you want to set it up at. We've actually found better success, Howard, having a six-month contract than a 12-month contract, because all you got to do is get them to commit. They don't, they, again, it's the gym membership. If you had to commit to a gym membership for two years, would you do it? Or if you just say, well, I'm going to sign up, I know I'm going to go, but like you just mentioned, 36 months later is when they finally cancel. Now, to be clear, I don't, these are not capitation plans, nor do I want offices that view it that way. We want patients coming in using these preventative services, which is why we have the rewards program. When you use your benefits, we'll give you rewards to future treatment. But if you cancel your plan, those rewards go away. They're just rewards. So stay on the plan long term to build rewards so that when you have that cavity, you need the crown, you want to do those veneers. There's a, there's a benefit there that can help pay for those services in the form of rewards. 
So that, that's another offer you can do right now. I've got offices that have patients that need treatment and they have patients that have rewards. And instead of throwing out a discount to uninsured membership patients saying, hey, if you come in in October and get that treatment plan done, I will give you an additional 10% discount. We're not doing that. What we're doing is saying, hey, Howard, you've got $200 of rewards. If you come in and get treatment in, in October, we'll double your rewards or we'll triple your rewards. But there's like you were talking about with membership. I, Howard, you're a member of my practice. I will triple your rewards if you want to come get those veneers done in October because you've been a great patient for the last several years. I'm going to reward you. And so we're getting treatment acceptance to go up. And instead of discounting, which, I mean, they are getting a better deal, but we're not preconditioning them that our, our work is, we're just going to throw out discounts. Instead, we're saying, use your rewards. We're going to give you a better deal on those rewards. So that's another good offer. If you have a reward program, you can double or triple rewards. So what... Um... So the people listening to this right now, and they're just feeling overwhelmed. And, and I, I've noticed um, a lot of people. In fact, um, um, the staff and I were talking about this morning. About you know, the newspaper was talking about you know, um, mental illnesses tripled, uh, calls. I mean, people are just stressed. Uh, so a lot of people listening just might be overwhelmed. What percent of this can you do for them, and what would it cost if, if they just said, you know, this this is good, but I I just I just not going to do this. Um, what can you they hire you to do for them? Sure. So the first thing we do is is set up this product for them. So our our base product, we come in, we're going to actually look at some insurance reimbursement information. We're going to look at some UCRs and we're going to have an intelligent conversation with the owner, doctor, and, and whoever else needs to be involved about pricing and what they need to include and how they can maximize revenue and making sure their product is a sellable product. So we'll help them set that up. And then we're going to, everything we do is white labeled for the practices. So patients don't buy anything from us. All we're doing is facilitating a, a relationship between the doctor and the patient. Everything's branded for the practice. The patient's being charged from their practice. We're just helping facilitate this relationship. So we'll set everything up. We'll design in, in a custom brochure and print it. We're going to actually build a membership website for them that has all their information. We'll connect it to their current site. We've got an online sign-up where patients can sign up outside the office. You can give them a tablet inside your office. They can sign up. We'll do all of that. And then we'll come in and train your staff for about an hour on how to sell the product and how to use the software. So we do all of that for a one-time upfront fee. Um, it's on our website, $7.95. And then ongoing using the software, uh, the patients pay a twenty-five dollar enrollment fee because they get those services that day, um, and that fee comes to us as well as two dollars per member per month, um, regardless of what plan they're on or what they've bought or any of those things. So it's very low risk for a, a practice to get going. Now, once they've gotten going, if they want help with marketing after that, those we can definitely help them with that. A lot of that depends on you know how many patients they have that we're reactivating what what really they want to accomplish. That's a little bit more custom based on their needs, but we can definitely help them with marketing or we'll refer some other people if it's things that we don't do. Okay. What if you're a little bit bigger of an office and you have an associate and uh, I'm the owner and I saw this plan, but now I got an associate over there doing fillings and et cetera. How, how does that, um, how does that affect? So that's the beauty of our program. That's what's different from our program than any other membership platform out there is we actually have you keep talking about an app. Our software is a web-based app that can sit on your phone or it sits on the front of your computer screen. It's about this big. And the front desk when a you have an app? Can, well it's a web-based app. So it's it's website based, but it looks just like an app. Um, and, and Delta Dental doesn't? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? They started in nineteen forty seven after World War II and you already got an app and they don't? Why <laughs> Why don't you just close down your business and start making them for Delta or Blue Cross and Blue Shell? By the, by the way, I got to tell you something last night really, really interesting to me. Um, Dennis now are sending me, uh, they were texting me and emailing me um, um, uh, their insurance company. Um, this is to specialists. It'd be like, a, say, an ended honest. Yeah. And they were charging, say, a thousand, say, say just easy math, a thousand dollars for a root canal. Right. And they were saying, they were saying, based on your utilization, 
we'll give you a check for 40 grand and we'll send you 40 grand if we can lower your fee from say a thousand to say whatever. But it was a one time and they had an expiration date of two weeks. You got two weeks. You say, yes, we're going to mail you this big chunk so that we can mail you a smaller amount easier. Because, you know, for dentists, they just, you know, they just figure there's so many dentists, they, they just lower and they don't care. But specialist is one of the things. If you're trying to sell dental insurance and you don't have any endodontist or oral surgeons, um, you know, you, you can't really sell it. So they, they were, they were, they're now offering specialists uh, a one-time chunk of change to lower their fee. So, um, again, it's just another, uh, just another thing that I haven't seen in 32 years of being a dentist where it makes me suspect about the um, economy going forward. Uh, for at least the next, um, I, I, I think the next calendar year. I, I, I don't think we're going to be out here. And, and I don't think Wall Street will have the profits to justify these price earnings ratios yeah. uh, for a couple of years. And in fact, the only way I, I can see that, um, that math adding up is for a correction. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and most people were looking for the correction before the pandemic started. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we were all in correction mode. I mean, these things happen every 10 years. It was 10 years before Lehman's, but I didn't mean to interrupt you, but. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So with, with our software, the front desk actually checks the patient out. So they're going to log a visit and they're going to actually choose what services that patient received. And they're going to choose the provider that did those. So it's very similar. Again, when we were talking about insurance and the four things insurance provides, that's what we provide for an office is we're going to actually organize their services into a menu, into a product patients can buy. And then we're going to help them market and sell that product. And then we'll help facilitate those payments from the patient to the practice. But then we're also going to track benefit eligibility and, and what provider did those services so that the providers, you know, if you've got an office, let's say you have three locations, how do we how do we keep track of if, if you know, I work downtown Phoenix, so I go to Phoenix to this office, and then my wife lives in Mason, she takes the kids to this office, who receives the, that revenue for those? And that's what we keep track of. So you actually log the benefits, you hit submit, and then we're going to provide a report to tell you exactly how to account for that revenue so that you can attribute that membership revenue to the associate doctor so that when you run his commission reports, you know exactly what he should get paid. So any office out there that has more than one provider or they're paying hygienists on uh, collections or production, this we, we've got an office solution to solve that. Most of them are running into this if they have their own plan and that they're doing themselves. Now, is this... Um... Is the best way to market this plan is to people that don't have dental insurance? I know it's a benefit, and I know it's a it's an endodontic therapy, but this root canal and this dental um, benefits is is that who's really responding to the ad, or if they already have dental benefits from work, are they still responding from this, or is your best bet to go after the half of America without dental benefits? Well, first off, the people that you think have dental benefits may not now. You don't really know that, so. And then the people that have dental benefits have friends that don't have dental benefits. <laughs> so you really want to market to, when you're doing your internal marketing, you for sure want to market to both camps. You want to market to all your patients because if you've got a patient that has dental insurance that loves you to death and she, she posts on Facebook, hey, I love my dentist, you should go here. And her friend responds, well, how much does it cost? I don't have insurance. You want her to say, well, they've actually got a great plan. So, you know, go check them out. So you, you definitely want to market to your insured patients. The messaging needs to be a little different, but you want to market to them as well as your uninsured patients because you know, times are crazy right now. <laughs> Who knows what insurance people have? I mean, it's changing. It's always changing. So how, how long have you been in the uh, dental business, dental market, did you say? Uh, so about a little over 10 years. 10 years. Is, is this the craziest you've seen it in your 10 years? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is crazy. I mean, we've, We've done different things and it's, it just uh, changes quite often. But what we have seen is the offices that have built a, a steady amount of membership patients that have five, 10, 15 grand a month coming in. It's helped. It's definitely helped stabilize things for them. Yeah. Um, and, and you're in, um, you're in Lay, Utah, um, 
right? Um, which is um, yeah, yeah. what is that? Just south of Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. And, and what is um? And a lot of people on the on the podcast they like to know how how's COVID nineteen look like in your backyard? I mean, is it is it real? Is it more real? Is it more hype? Is it more? Um, what, what's the general feedback in uh, in Utah about all this? Uh, so Utah's not as crazy as some states. Um, depends on the county, <laughs> but there has been a spike in cases and, and stuff with schools. But o- overall, the the doctors are, I would say, more fed up with it at this stage. Uh, they've been they've been okay. They've been able to go back to business. They're hoping they don't they don't get shut down. I mean, we've got. We've got practices all over in lots of different states, but Utah seems to be okay. We'll see. We'll see how that that plays out. And by the way, I just want to tell you, I, I don't know where you live, but I know the. Uh, uh, my gosh, I um I live in Phoenix, Arizona. So you're exactly like I don't know how many miles are you from Phoenix? Do you have any idea? Uh, it's about a ten hour drive. What is it? I don't know, five six hundred miles. Yeah, but man, Phoenix straight up to Utah. Holy moly. Then I, I actually got to make the drive Phoenix to Utah all the way through Idaho, all the way up um, through Montana into uh, um, to all the way to Edmonton. Mm-hmm. And my God, that was that was just that was several days of just I I mean, it's the most beautiful yeah. part of Earth you could ever see. Yeah, I mean, it's sweet. just beyond, beyond gorgeous. I mean, crazy gorgeous. Yeah. Um and and you know it's God's country because you only um, you're you're halfway between Salt Lake and God. He's uh, Gordon's in Provo, Utah, and he's the God of dentistry. And when you die, he'll be sitting up there with all your charts, and he's going to go through all your charts. And uh, um, so um so do you um do you um you what percent do you think the dentists are running at? Do you think it's about um, the ADA is saying that dentists are running about 71% of pre-pandemic. Uh, some people say 80%. What, what, what would you say the percent is of uh, who you're working with? You know, that's what's crazy is is I've got offices that are busier than they've ever been before. And I've got offices that are scared to death. And this is the worst it's ever been. And they're slow. And I will tell you, the the offices that were doing better before the pandemic and and make smarter decisions and treat their practice as a business, they're doing well. They've been able to adapt and they're doing all right. The the people that kind of the offices that didn't do anything and they just figured, well, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'm not gonna. I'm not. My membership plan's fine. Everything's fine. I'm making enough money. Those are the ones that are really hurting. And this pandemic's not going to go away if you don't adapt and change the way that you're doing business, you're going to continue to hurt. Now, that being said, my offices that are doing really, really well, I mean, they're they're anywhere from 25 to 75% capacity in October. <laughs> I mean, they're all hurting in October um, for hygiene. They're a lot slower. Well, let me, let me, let me talk about the hygiene because um, a lot of, a lot of the kids in, in, that are in dental school, I, I, it seems like about a quarter of the kids have a dentist in the family somewhere. You know, yeah. she's in dental school. Her mom's a dentist. Um, he's in dental school. Her, his dad's brother's a dentist. When you go to India and Brazil, it seems like at least a third, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, so, so occupations have been very family. I mean, if your dad was a goat farmer for five generations and you're out in the middle of nowhere, you do, you know, you raise goats, but, but think about your mom's office. I mean, you're in dental school, you're 25 and your mom's a dentist. So her hygiene department, I always um, picture it like just like a glass of coffee or a glass of hot cocoa. And your mom's been pouring new patients in this glass for 20, 30 years. And what I mean by that is your mom has only had one hygienist. In fact, she's always, I, let me tell you what a magician I is. Um, I know she's in room one, the (laughs) hygienist. She's, she's never in room four or five. She's always the first room. And, um, let's say she works, um, um, you know, just for easy math, she works eight hours a day, five days a week, um, 50 weeks a year. That's 2000 hours a year. Let's say there's no gum disease or anything, just cleanings every six months, a 40 hour a week, five day, eight hour a day, five day a week, 50 week hygienist. She can clean a thousand people's teeth twice a year for an hour. 
It's straight up math. Okay, yeah. well, if your mom's been getting 10 new patients a month, she would have added a hygienist every eight years. If she was getting 20 new patients a month, it had been every four years. If she was getting 30 new patients a month, every two and a half years, she'd add another hygienist. But you know what? Your mom's in a town of 5,000 people. She's had the same hygienist 40 hours a week for three decades. And you keep pouring new patients into her glass. So, I mean, just picture that. You, you got a whole coffee pot. You got one mug. And you're just pouring coffee into this mug for 30 years. Uh, do you realize that eventually the coffee cup fills up and overflows? So, the question is, a lot of guys like you, where you, you're seeing that you're seeing a lot of offices from 30,000 feet. I want you to go back. What have you learned from these patients um, that don't have a dental home, why did they not go back? I mean, if yeah. e- I mean everybody in Utah, everybody's new patient in Utah was either just born or just moved there. Yeah. So if they weren't just born and they didn't just move there and they say, yeah, I've lived in Utah my whole life, well, yeah. then is this the first time you've ever seen a dentist? No. You can see the fillings in their teeth. So what way do you think people aren't coming back to the old dentist and yeah. now are in play for a new dentist? That's really the million dollar question. Yeah, that is crazy. I mean, I would say one of the main reasons is just complacency. You know, when you talk to people about their their dentist, uh, they don't hate them or they don't love them. So they're just kind of complacent. And so when you've got when you've got people that are marketing aggressively, uh, different offices marketing aggressively with, with offers. And we talked about it sometimes dentists are their own worst enemies, right? Because they're, it's this race to the bottom with, well, who's going to do it cheapest? Who's going to do it cheapest? And instead of focusing on how do I provide the best experience and also have the best product so that when that patient does come in, that new patient comes in for the first time, how do I convert them to a long-term patient? And I'm telling you, Outside of dental insurance, the products that are out there, the offices are offering in a membership style plan aren't very good products. And so they're not able to get them to stick long term. And so the patient just kind of flounders and they visit the dentist when they feel like it. And and they're susceptible to offers they are susceptible to going to Google when something hurts. And so they just jump to the next deal and they jump around a little bit and they they aren't real loyal to that, that practice. But it's because you're not you're not giving them a reason to be loyal. Why should I be loyal to you? Why should I come to you? What are you doing for me that makes me want to be with you long term? And a lot of offices don't have much to offer other than, well, I like the dentist. But but where you really get killed is when, let's say they're going to, to in that scenario, the mom who they've been going to for 30 years, what happens when she brings Junior up and these patients are, well, I don't know if I like Junior. I'm not really sure I like Junior. I'm not going to come back to him. I'm going to go elsewhere. I'm going to shop around. If you would have had a product that they were connected to and they're connected to the practice, not as much as that provider, it's going to go a lot smoother in a transition. And another thing you were talking about earlier is that, you know, you're saying that um, uh, motivate the staff, you know, uh, give them a benefit. I mean, um, if you're a little older, you remember a book that came out a long time ago about the five love, la- love languages or uh, words of affirmation and um, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, physical touch. Uh, the physical touch thing, that's kind of an illegal thing at work. Uh, you might leave that one alone. But look at words of affirmation that are so important. And how many times has the dentist walked in and he's got an 8 o'clock patient and he walks in at 5 till, goes up and looks at the schedule. First thing out of his mouth. Who the hell, what, what, what the hell's wrong with my schedule? It's like, oh, well, good morning, doc. This is great. This is your team. They're all working for you. And the first thing out of your mouth was an oral fart demoralizer uh, saying stupid things like that. Um, act of service is a, uh, is, is a tough one because uh, sometimes um, you just think, uh, you know, your spouse says, well, let, let's paint this room on this weekend. And you're like, ah, oh, it's easier to hire a painter. And you don't realize that she wanted you to paint with She just wanted to spend the day with you yeah. and painting. And, and you're thinking, oh, it'd be faster to hire someone. Um, receiving gifts. I mean, look at these five-star white restaurants that keep these amazing waiters and waitresses for years. And they have a kick-ass night. And what do they do when they're at the end of the day? 
They tip out the bus boy for, you know, running butter, the, the bartender. They always spread around the cash um, because it, it, it changes everything. And I'll tell you what, um, for 33 years when I sat there and it was time to go to lunch, but a toothache was there and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do this root canal right now. Well, I, I miss lunch. Well, I build out $1,000. But my dental assistant didn't bill out $1,000, and she actually missed her lunch. And why don't you have a Benjamin in your wallet where you just say, sorry, you missed lunch, and then put a Benjamin in her hand, and you train your whole staff. Like, you missed your lunch, and you, and you don't go home on time with Howie. This this waiter is going to tip you out. And yeah. I'm not, and so many times I would, um, you know, be the last person of the day. They broke a tooth. There was a pain. So it would be a root canal buildup crown you know we had the syrup machine so it might be scanned the whole thing that's two and a half hours well it's also like 2500 bucks and and you know your assistant thought she was leaving at five now she's leaving at 7 30 and you you just say thanks i mean you should really go with a lot of words of affirmation like you know thank you so much um you know th- i mean this is a hospital i mean a hospital doesn't say oh you're having a heart attack well we all get off at five so Go home and die. You know, it, it just it just is. You do what you do, but my gosh, um, you got to um, share around. Um, you got better words of aff- affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and uh, not the physical touch thing. But uh, how? What? What else would you recommend to um, get your staff behind this long term? So we've had success with the. Uh, Team goals as well. You know, if, if you can get your back office, you can get your hygienist. It's a hygiene product. You can get your hygienist talking about it. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm looking at your mouth. It looks like you could really benefit from coming in every six months. That's our best, best values to get you going on this membership program. Talk to Molly up at the front desk. And then, you know, Molly's telling her the same type of a thing. And so we've had success, you know, when, when you hit a hundred members, go out for a spa day or or, and let's, what you ought to do is have a team meeting and let let your team decide what motivates them. I don't know what motivates them. You know, is it a gift card? Is it a spa day? Is it a, you know, let them set some incentives at some different intervals that when you hit those with your membership, then then as a team, you're going to build team team loyalty doing that as well. But let them earn that by how many members you're signing up or or uh, you know the revenue goals on on the membership plan, so that they're excited to sell the membership plan. Not oh, this is just something else you're asking me to do. You just added more work for me. Why do I care? I don't care. I don't. I'm not going to sell anybody. It's just more work. And we've also, if you've got a, you know, some offices, if you have a, a key staff member, you know, tell them you're paying ten bucks every time they sign up a membership patient. It would be worth it. It would really be worth it. So, um, how do they contact you if they want more information? So, if they just want to go to our website, thedentalmenu.com. So, just as it sounds, thedentalmenu.com. So, uh, it's thedentalmenu.com. Yep. So, it's thedentalmenu.com. And I'll just be frank. She, I, I know what my homies think. I mean, uh, I'm on Dental Town all day long. She's going to think, God, there's so many of them. I've heard of so many plans. There's a million plans out there. Um, you know, why Why you? Not Why not some of the, the other ones? Um, um, some of the come to mind, like clear, um, other ones. Why are, what's unique about you versus the other one? Um, how, many, how many different plans are there out there right now? How many companies would you guess? I don't know, 20. <laughs> okay, 20, 20. So, so, why, so why you? Why you? So what most, what the competitors do is they help you set up subscriptions. So they'll talk about this reoccurring revenue all day long, which again, you, you can do that yourself. I'll help you to do that. You just, you set up these subscriptions. That's not where it's difficult. Again, if you look at those four things that insurance does, organizing those services into a product. So we actually allow patients to be able to customize a subscription to your office. You don't have one plan or two plans or three plans, you can actually help a patient navigate and customize a subscription. So nobody out there has the ability for patients to add services. My wife wants bleaching and nitrous. I want fluoride. We we are able to buy what we want. And then we actually are tracking the benefits and the eligibility in the provider. So nobody else is 
really close that loop. It's a complete system. So we'll do it all for you. But when you look at managing the payments and the benefits in the providers, if you've got 200 patients that all have customized subscriptions, my goodness, what are you? how are you going to manage that? And so our software is set up to function very similar to dental insurance so that your staff is used to managing everything. And that's really what's different is we're doing the whole thing. We're not just we're not just focusing on payments and then we're going to set up a reoccurring subscription revenue. What we're doing is setting up a more robust product that patients can pick and choose a little bit about what they want and they can they can add things on and then we're going to manage that entire benefit loop with the providers for you. That's really the big difference. There's a short video on our website that, that explains it pretty well also. If they want to go check that out. And what what is that video on? Uh, just on the there's one on the homepage, and then if you just scroll down a little bit, there's there's now, is, that a, is that a is that a Vimeo or YouTube? Uh, it's on Vimeo as well, but it's on our just on our website on the homepage. If you email that to me at howarddentaltown.com, um, I can um, uh, I can't believe we've gone well over an hour. Um, I can play those videos for them right now. So. Um, Whatever, whatever videos you have, because I love videos because, you know, how long did it take you to make that video, to write it, produce it? I mean, sometimes 10 hours goes behind a one minute video. Oh yeah, definitely. All right. I'll send it over. Yeah, do that. And then uh, we'll, um, uh, we'll put that up uh, and you can hear that now. So um, Paul, um, thank you so much for coming on the show and, um, talking to my homies and giving them some hope and uh, things they can work on and action lists so they're just not sitting home uh, uh, feeling the blues. Uh, give them something motivated to fight about. And so just go to thedentalmenu.com and um, come on, guys. This, this is when I need you to be your best. I mean, um, when you when you just won three, three months in a row when you're kicking ass. Sometimes it's just like, ah, forget it. I'm going to take out two weeks and go on vacation. But you know when everybody needs you the most is when this shit hits the fan. I mean, every general will tell you that the first casualty of war is the battle plan because as soon as they hear the first shot, everybody runs and dives back into the, uh, um, behind the, the wall, and this is when they need you the most. Your team needs you the most. Your patients need you the most. Your community needs you the most. So this is when you just need to stand up and lead. Paul's giving you a lot of things. He's got um, um, his website, the dental menu. But, Paul, thank you so much for coming yeah, on the sure. show today. Um, it was very, very fun listening to what you're doing, and best of luck to you during the, the pandemic. All right. Appreciate it. I sent those videos over. All right, buddy. Have hey. a rocking good day, and good luck with those kids. What would you say, four of them? <laughs> Six of them. Six of them? Holy moly. <laughs> well, good luck with those, and, and, uh, and remember the – best reason to never kill your kid is because they'll make you grandkids someday so i uh and right, so, looking uh, forward to it as long as yeah, the timing's no matter, right what's that as long as the timing's right when those grandkids come <laughs> all right well have a great day paul all right you too Thanks. all right bye-bye say hello to dental menu the most advanced dental membership software in the world Intuitive software enables you to create a menu of services to offer to your patients. From a phone, tablet, or computer, patients can easily sign up and build a custom plan that suits their dental needs. This isn't bloated software that demands a whole desktop. A sleek window manages all dental menu functions without interrupting your existing systems. A simple launch board enables all your plan management to be just a click away. Add new patients to plans track benefits, manage patients' visits, and patient profiles. Receive rich, detailed reports connecting plan benefits to plan revenue with a detailed overview of growth and performance. Schedule a demo today to see all these tools in action. TheDentalMenu.com